Hi guys, in next lecture, we will be talking about string and text values and how to work with them in your codeless logic. If you think about it, most of the components you would put on a page, they work with string values, whether it's an input component or select component or data that you receive from the server and you need to process it somehow, you would be running into scenarios where you need to perform some kind of operations on string values. So in this lecture, I wanted to explore this more in depth, just to give you an, uh, an idea of what's possible in Codeless and how to work with string values. To get started, what I'd like you to do is go into this area where it says editing page and create a new page based on the playground template that we created. So what you will need to do is in this area where it says create as select fork and then select your playground page template that we created in one of the earlier lectures. Give it a name, for example, string tests. A page is created. It is exact replica of the playground page. Here we have an ability to add logging and let's just get started. So the very first thing that I'd like you to do is drag a block component, select that block, change the direction left to right and drag an input control in here. So this is our input control. If you click on it and then go to the logic section for that input control, you will see this. And one of the events that is available for the input control is called on change event. Click the add logic button. So this is the event that is going to be called by uh, UI builder by your codeless engine whenever user enters data into that input field. We're going to leave it at that for now. But let's explore the abilities that exist in codeless to work with strings and text. Under system in this section right here, you will see a category called text. If you click on it, you'll see a bunch of different codeless blocks that are there to, to give you an idea what kind of operations are possible on strings. And as you can see, there is a variety of things that you can do. Most, most of them are self-explanatory. Like for instance, this, the very first one, it lets you find the first occurrence of a specific text in some other text. Uh, the use case that I wanted to explore is as user types in a value in that input control for which we added the on change event. What I'd like to do is to log the length of that string value. Very simple use case not very meaningful, but it will be demonstrative just to give you an idea of how to work with those string values. So in here, uh, what we will do is we will just use our logging function and in custom functions, if you click on it, you will see that log block and let that log block, that log function, we inherited it when we created our page based on the playground template. So connect this log to the on change event. And this will be invoked every time user types in anything into our input control. So the log message, let's compose the log message. If you click on text, one of the blocks is called create text with. Drag it out into your event and connect it to the log message. This component is quite versatile. If you click on the gear icon, what you can do is you can add additional items to it. And then as you do this, you see that there are additional connectors. So you can compose a text by concatenating multiple values together. We will not need that many. Two will be sufficient. So in here, what we want to do is we want to create a log message that says the length of the, in, of the entered value is such and such. So to do this, we will connect to the first connector, a static text. So use this block right here and type in length of the entered data is and the second connector will contain the actual length of the value that is typed in into the input field to calculate the length once again it is one of the functions available in the text group and in here you will see that there is a block called length of drag it out and put it into this connector so the we need to calculate the length of what's entered into the text field into that input component and what's entered into the input component is going to be right here, changed value. This is like arguments that are provided 
into your codeless logic. So drag this changed value and put it into the length of. Finally, there is one more connector, which is page data. So we need to put it right into here. At this point, we have all the logic we need just to get that logging going. So let's preview this page. So this is our input field. Let's just start typing some values. This is a test. So as you can see, as I'm typing values, we get this log messages. And now we see that the last one, it says 14. So there are 14 characters in here. And as you can see, is if I make changes to the contents of this input field, we get additional log messages. So let's clear out the logs and uh, we can remove this guy as well. And uh, so in here, what we already learned is that how to concatenate text and how to calculate the length of text. And uh, this is very, very simple. All you just need to know is that there is a bunch of other blocks that give you an ability to operate with text. Now let's apply a few more functions just, just to see how they work as well. And to do this, first of all, let's get rid of these log messages and just display the length in some other uh, label. So for this, let's add a text component to our block right here. And uh, this input will modify the dimension to take 100% for the width. And also add some padding on the right just so it's not sticking to that text value. Uh, the label we can change to enter text, just so it looks a little bit prettier. And uh, this text, let's make this a little bit larger font. We can also remove the bottom padding for the input component and then center the contents of this block just so they a little bit better aligned. All right, so this text, we can use data binding and the data binding property, let's call it LEN for length. And then for the input component, if we go back to our on change event, what we can do is set the property in page data, LEN, which is the property that the label is uh, has data binding for. And the value is going to be the length of this. Let's get rid of the log. So for now, nothing's really changed. We got rid of the logging, and now we will see the length of the uh, entry text in that label. Let's see how it works. This is a test value. And as you can see, we have the length calculated right here. Now, we haven't really made any changes as far as using new functions. So to take advantage of some other functions, let's drag another block into the page. And in here, let's also put an input component. And let's make this input component read only. So for this input component, the idea that I have is any text that we enter in here, we will be displaying the same text, but all in uppercase, because there is a function to convert values to uppercase. To implement this, select the, input com the second input component and click the icon to go to the logic. And then the data, the data binding for the value will be upper case value, which is just the name of the property. And this can be anything. I made it up as, as I go. So you can name this property anything you want to. Uh, now for the, for the first component, if we go to our logic to, on change event, what we will do is we will add another set property in page data. And then the property is going to be the same property that the, the other input component is data bound to. And then the value is going to be conversion to the uppercase of the changed value. So as you can see, this one is used to place the length of the entered uh, text. And then this one will be converting the entered value into the uppercase, placing it into page data to this property and then data binding will automatically resolve and display that value in uppercase. So let's see how well that works. So let's just start typing text. This is some text in lowercase. As you can see, as I'm typing in, the value is automatically replicated and in uppercase, which is the work of that to uppercase function. So as you can see, working with strings 
is actually fairly simple. All you do is you just need to apply any of these components to do whatever you need it to do. And as I mentioned, most of them, if not all of them, are very self-explanatory. So here, this one checks if the value is empty, if it has any characters in it. This one checks if this text starts with some other text. And there are some options, like instead of starts with, you can do ends with or contains. So here, you can check if text contains, if you select contains, contains some other value, and so on. So uh, as you can see, just working with text, once again, is very, very easy. I hope you found this demonstration useful and understand how text come into play when you work with your logic and you build an application. Thank you for watching this video and as always, happy codeless coding.